Yeah. Well, one, I, I think it's, you know, from my point of view, it's impossible to ignore the influence of Islam. But this is an argument that was actually first developed by medieval Islamic scholars. Cosmological arguments were debating what has effectively become one of the most popular arguments in Christian apologetics. Al-Ghazali frames his argument very simply, I quote, Every being which begins has a cause for its beginning. Now the world is a being which begins. Therefore, it possesses a cause for its beginning. Then, you know, the Western Empire fell and, you know, we, we ushered in the Dark Ages. Uh, and insofar as there was a reboot to civilization at that point, it was largely the result of classical, the, the learning and, and the philosophical insight of antiquity being preserved by, of all people, the, the, in the Islamic world, right. right. So then why, then why here? Meaning like why in Judeo-Christian civilization, civilization, but not Islamic civilization? Because you mentioned rediscovery yeah. of Aristotle and, and reuse of Aristotle in 10th and 11th centuries was really beginning, you know, in, in the Islamic world. Long before Aquinas really repopularized it in the, in the 13th and 14th centuries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, I, I think it's, you know, from my point of view, it's impossible to ignore the influence of Islam. The Kalam cosmological argument, first developed by medieval Islamic scholars. It's what is the Kalam cosmological argument? Let's allow one of its greatest medieval champions to speak for himself. Al-Ghazali was a 12th century Muslim theologian. The Kalam cosmological argument was first formulated, as I say, in medieval times before anyone knew about, you know, Big Bang cosmology. After thoroughly studying the teachings of these philosophers, Al-Ghazali wrote a withering critique of their views entitled The Incoherence of the Philosophers. So once again, we can summarize Al-Ghazali's argument in three simple, easily memorizable steps. One, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. This argument is so marvelously simple that it's easy to memorize and share with another person. It's also a logically airtight argument. If the universe never began to exist, then the number of past events is infinite. But, Al-Ghazali argued, this is impossible because an actually infinite number of things cannot exist. The way in which Ghazali You know, from my point of view, it's impossible to ignore the influence of Islam. 